Okay, in this video, I'm going to provide a brief illustration of how you can run a least squares regression using robust standard errors. The reason why you might choose to utilize this particular strategy when analyzing your data is when you have uh, run your analysis using least squares regression and evaluated um, the assumptions um, concerning the residuals from that model, uh, the main assumption in this case being uh, the assumption of constant variances. And uh, when you violate that assumption, uh, what that often translates into is um, that your standard errors for your regression coefficients uh, are biased downwards, and it increases the likelihood of making a type 1 error when making inferences about the population regression coefficients. So this is um, one strategy that you can uh, use um, in those cases where uh, there's evidence of a violation of the constant variance assumption. So, um, so in Stata, you can run the, your analyses in a couple of ways. You can run it through uh, menus or you can run it through syntax. Uh, I'll illustrate running uh, this analysis both ways. So we'll start off, I'm going to start actually by running just a least squares regression. Um, and in this data set that I have, I've got variables gender, subject matter interest, mastery goals, anxiety, and academic achievement. And so I have basically data on uh, 50 uh, fictional students uh, with uh, these measures, and I'm going to re regress um, achievement onto the remaining predictors. And I'm going to use, like I said, both the menu option and um, using syntax. So starting off with the menu options, um, just for starters, we'll just we'll, we'll begin with just a, a basic least squares regression model where we make the assumption of constant variances. So in this case, I'm just going to move achievement to the dependent box and the independent box. I'm going to add gender, subject matter, interest, mastery goals, and anxiety. Gender is a dummy coded variable coded zero for male, one for female. And um, so if I run the analysis, you can see uh, here are, are my regression results. And um, you know you can see that um, there's a significant relationship between gender and achievement. Basically, uh, with the coding, uh, females who are coded one scored about 3.94 points higher on average than males who are coded zero. Um, and uh, you can see a positive relationship between subject matter interest and achievement. A uh, positive relationship between mastery goals and achievement and anxiety it was a negative relationship. Of the predictors, it looks like gender, subject matter interest, and anxiety were all significant, but mastery goals was not. Now let's run the same analysis, but using um, robust standard errors. So I'm going to go to uh, linear models and related, linear regression, and click on standard errors robust. So <clears throat> basically it's like this. If I had run this analysis and um, performed a residual analysis and looked to see if there was uh, any kind of violation of the constant variance assumption or homogeneity of variances, then uh, this might be a strategy for dealing with that problem because the standard errors that you see right here might be uh, deflated and that increases the likelihood of uh, incorrect rejection of the null hypothesis. So. Uh, assuming that I've run this analysis and uh, performed my residual analysis and concluded that we have a violation of the assumption of constant variances, then I would click on robust. And um, there are actually three different uh, approaches here. We're just going to stick with the default. And I'll click on OK. And so now you can see that I've uh, we have the robust regression that is, has been run. So you'll notice that the coefficients are all exactly the same whether we ran it using the standard uh, least squares regression or uh, using uh, the robust standard errors. All these are going to be exactly the same. The differences are going to be in the standard errors that you see right here. You can see that these uh, standard errors, now in this particular data set, um, there was no evidence of a violation of the assumption um, concerning uh, constant variances or homogeneity of variances. So really, there wasn't any need to run uh, the robust or run the least squares regression with the robust standard errors. But nevertheless, you can visually see, you know, you can see that, um, uh, you know, you've got a, um, these are the standard errors 
And you can see that, um, you know, in many cases, the standard errors are higher after running a robust regression or running a regression with the robust standard errors as opposed to the uh, default uh, standard errors. And so that, that will generally translate into, um, you know, the T values then are going to be uh, a little bit smaller, uh, oftentimes down here, and uh, that also can translate into less powerful significance tests. But that's the basic idea is that you're trying to offset uh, any deflation in the standard errors uh, as a result of the violation by uh, increasing the standard errors and th thereby making the test a little bit less powerful and making it um, uh, less likely that you will commit a type 1 error. <clears throat> so if I want to run the uh, regression analyses um, using uh, syntax, um, you know, this is basically the syntax for the uh, least squares regression. So just to rerun that, I can just type in regress and then I have to type in the names of the variables as they appear, including the caps. So I will type in achieve, that's my dependent variable. And then I'll type in gender. Um, you know, there's uh, subject matter, interest, uh, M, goal, and anxiety here. And so there you go. That's the initial least squares regression that we ran. Um, if I want to run the uh, robust, uh, the, the least squares regression with the robust standard errors, this is a syntax here, but I could have also just typed in uh, regress. And, um, and also, you know, I can drag these over here so I don't have actually have to type in literally everything. So I could say regress achievement, my dependent variable, onto, we got gender, we got uh, subject matter interest here. Mastery goals, and anxiety here, and then comma, and I can type in robust, and uh, basically that gets me the same information as if, you know running it through the menu option with uh, with this syntax. So either way would work. So basically, like I said, uh, the reason why you would do this is uh, in those cases where you might have um, you've run the standard least squares regression and you find that you violated the assumption of constant variances. And so uh, it doesn't, uh, the, this particular analysis does not impact the actual regression coefficients. Uh, it doesn't affect, you know, the R square value or anything like that, but it does affect the standard errors and the T values and the P values. Uh, and essentially it's, it's designed to make the test a little bit more conservative so that you're not more so so that you're less likely to um, commit a type one error when making inferences about your regression coefficients.